Hello and welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today we're having a look at the second five-man dungeon to be released on the Legion Alpha, which is Blackrock Hold. Yes, and Blackrock Hold, just for the people who don't know what it is, it is an elven stronghold that was used against the Legion during the War of the Ancients, but since then, the Legion have come in and taken it all over and forced the spirit of the elves who once lived in the garrison to then fight for the Legion, and it's our job to go in there and sort them all out. This instance has four bosses, and it has a real sort of Karazhan vibe to it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, definitely. It's just maybe a little bit more sinister. Now, when you first zone into the dungeon, you'll actually be uh, in the catacombs, which is directly underneath Blackrock Hold, and you need to progress your way up towards the top, because right at the top of the instance is where the last boss is. Now, inside these catacombs, it's very eerie. Yeah, it's pretty spooky. Blizzard have done quite a good job down here, and you have an option to go either on the left or the right-hand side of the catacombs. Both paths do lead into the same area. Now, once you've made your way through there, you will come to the first boss. And this is the Amalgam of Souls, who is Maragar crossed with a pigeon. Yeah. He's amazing. Look how cool he is. It's such a cool model. And this guy is very, very deadly, but very easy to deal with. He has a giant frontal cleave called Reap Soul, and it's like at a targeted direction, so you can actually move out of it. And if you are hit by it, you take an absolutely stupid amount of damage, as well as you get a 20% damage taken debuff on you for 30 seconds. So the idea is, is that you move through the boss whenever this comes in, so you don't get hit by the cleave. And if you're a DPS or a healer, never be in front of the boss. This will flat out one shot you if you haven't got any sort of defensive up. And this did happen a couple of times, and it was pretty funny. He also send out a spinning scythe towards a player and it will remain stationary once it reaches its location. It will do a fair amount of damage to you if you're hit by it, but it will also knock you back, but in a really weird ping pongy sort of way. It like knocks you back like three times yeah. in a row. It's a bit funky. And if you're stuck between two of them, you can kind of be like pushed between two of them. It's pretty weird, but yeah, really, really cool ability. Now he's also supposed to have a mechanic called Soul of Echoes. This is supposed to make a player spawn a fragment of their soul and then that will explode a couple of seconds later. This didn't actually happen on Alpha, but you can assume when it spawns, you just move away from it. Or maybe you have to kill it before it explodes something or something like that. Like but that. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get to see that. Now, after you've killed off that boss, the Night Elf spirits within the catacombs will open up a main door, and this will then lead into a library. Now, in this library, there's a bunch of mobs that you can't target in any way, shape, or form. They're kind of like Night Elf spirits, which are supposed to be working during the War of the Ancients, and this is kind of re-emphasized because there's this map in the middle, which shows the whole mega continent that was before, like, the Well of Eternity exploded, and it has, like, loads of little figurines showing about, like, where they're going to be fighting in the War of the Ancients. It's a nice little bit of detail. Nice touch. Yeah, yeah of, like, trying to show you that this was a garrison during that time but after you move through that area you hit your first spiral staircase which is covered in spiders and there's some jump spiders yes there is a point where i actually shat myself because <laughs> there's like a tiny little like corridor and then a spider jumped out of you it's trying to scare you a little bit and there's also like another little down bit where you could go and fight some spiders in front of a treasure chest and in that treasure chest you got some cheese some stormwind cheese <laughs> yeah and we got a jade one time yeah, as well that was nice you got jade. That was it's pretty awesome nice. i assume they'll actually put some proper treasure in there later on but you keep going up the staircase and you enter this huge hallway now in this hallway you'll see elisana up on top of the balcony but first, you need to take on waves of mobs. It takes a little while to do it. They actually have an ability where they throw knives at everyone that does a ridiculous amount of damage. The idea is that you kill the mobs before they cast this ability, or you stun them while they are casting the ability. Yeah, you can move away as well, but you need to move pretty far away in yeah. order to do it. But they do stand still when they do it, so you can run away, but generally focus those mobs down. They hurt a lot. As soon as you've killed them off, you can go around towards the right-hand side and go up another set of staircases, and then you'll finally get to the boss. Now, this encounter actually has two phases. In phase one, one of her abilities is that she'll mark a selection of players, and then after three seconds, she'll just dash between them. And as she's dashing between them, she'll also spawn fire in her wake. The dash itself doesn't do a lot of damage, and neither does the fire, really, but it's World of Warcraft, and it's fire, so you've got to move out of it anyway. She'll also do a brutal glaive. This does physical damage to a target and applies a 30-second dot. And this ability seems kind of weird. It doesn't seem to target ranged players. It's always melee players. Yeah. But it applies it to everyone in melee yeah it can kind of decide it, it like yes. bounces or something it's a little bit weird not sure how that works didn't really understand that but something for your tanks to worry about is something called vengeful shear this is just a hard hit on the tank and if you have no active mitigation up um when the hit comes in you'll receive a debuff that increases the damage you take by 15 percent for 25 seconds so it's just a standard have active mitigation up when the big casted hit comes in but the problem is is that she can do this just after a dark rush when she isn't in melee range of you and it will still hit you so, because you can't get to her, and it's very unlikely, most classes can't put active mitigation up unless they're, like, by the boss. 
so it can kind of screw you over and you might need to follow the boss around in order to avoid this ability. Now the boss actually has got an energy bar which is slowly going up throughout the entirety of phase one and when he reaches 100 she'll then transition into phase two. She'll go to the edge of the balcony like flying slightly above it. You can still hit her during this point. I don't know why she goes there but it looks kind of cool and then she'll start fixating beams on players and you need to kite the fire around because it leaves a horrible fire path in its wake. It's very similar to any of those mechanics from well, loads of bosses do this one. You could say it's from um, Skyreach. That happens a lot in Skyreach. <laughs> Just run away from fire. Fire's bad and try not to put it in horrible places. During this time, you can actually get some uh, mobs come in. These mobs are the exact same as the trash you were just fighting. One of them has like a frontal cone that will stun you, so you've got to move out of it. And the other one will just spam an arcane blast thing that will deal damage and it deals more and more damage over time. So the idea is, is that you just blow up these ads and when the ads are dead, you then switch to the boss and wait for her to run out of energy and then return back into phase one and the fight will just keep going over and over again until she dies. You then move round up another set of spiral staircases Instead of having spiders, this time you have like these new weird goblins. Yeah, they're a bit odd. They have like backpacks on and they have an ability where they like drink an elixir or something. And this will give them a random effect. It will either make them huge with like a huge attack speed buff. It will make one of them like spew out fire. It will make it so they fixate on players and whirlwind. They can, like, fear and stuff. Yeah, as well. it's it, all over the place. These goblins really. are a little bit odd. But they don't really do any damage. They're just kind of irritating. Just group them up as best you can and kill them. And if you can stun them while they're drinking their elixir, then they're absolutely nothing. You don't even need to worry about them. You then go up another set of spiral staircases and then you see Fell Lord Zakun and a load of bats. Yeah, you fight a bunch of these Fell Lord people and loads of bats, but once yeah. you eventually fight your way through them, you will get yourself to a balcony where you see the third boss, which is Smash Bite the Hateful. Now, out of all the bosses, this is the guy that definitely did the most damage. Um, he has an AoE on the group called Earthshaking Stomp. This just deals a large amount of physical damage to everyone, completely unavoidable, and knocks them back. The boss also does a disgusting amount of tank damage. At 100% rage, the boss will cast Brutality that just deals a crazy amount of damage to the tank and also increases the amount of damage the tank takes by 100% for 10 seconds. Yeah, it did an absolute ton. You kind of need an active mitigation for when it comes in and then maybe another set of active mitigation for the debuff afterwards because yeah. it did a ton of damage. As or maybe well as a lot of spot healing yeah, from your healer. Yeah, a lot of healing. So it really, really did hurt. Something else the boss will also do is that he will call bats that are flying outside the um, encounter area. So focus on a single player and then seconds later, they'll just bomb it along of fell shit towards them and it sort of creates a line and if you stand within this line you take ticking damage and quite a lot of ticking damage and one interesting thing about these lines is that they do appear to last permanently but you do have loads of room within the encounter area and technically you could stack these lines on top of each other yeah you definitely could but the thing is you just got to always be careful of the earth shaking stomp because that of yeah. course can knock you back into the line so you've always got to try your best not to be knocked back into the yeah. horrible vomit but apart from that, that's all the boss did. He's supposed to also like do a charge mechanic where he's supposed to focus a target and then just charge in that direction. And if you're hit, you get like a debuff that increases the amount of damage you take from this charge by 100%. Yeah, it seems to do a hell of a lot of damage. It's very similar to the first boss in Grim Patol, I think. I think that's going to how it's going to be where he like marks a location. Yeah. You got to move out of that location, otherwise you'll probably die. Or maybe even Iron Howl from Trial of the Grand Crusader. It might yeah, be something exactly. Like that. The whole idea is that you move away from where you're about to be hit because otherwise you'll die. But we didn't get to see that. It didn't seem to be implemented just yet. But yeah, this boss was 100% the hardest one. Yeah. It, it, was, was... it was fun to do though. Yeah. It was nice to heal. Yeah, it, it was a nice change. Considering all the trash did absolutely no damage whatsoever up to the boss yeah so after you killed him off you go back the way you came and guess what's coming up next they more spiral staircases more spiral staircases oh, and this wow. time you have to kill some night elf ghosts that try to kill you for one reason or another you go up another spiral staircase and then another one and then some more and then you finally get to the last boss chamber yeah really out of breath at this point yeah, really i can, out I can of barely go upstairs anyway then this is awful but either way you get to the last boss chamber which is a lovely room with like an open roof and you're going to be fighting lord kurtalus ravencrest and latosius which is his kind of like friend um, it's like his advisor, but you don't actually fight him. What he does, he kind of fades into the shadows right at the beginning of the encounter. And what you'll do is be spamming shadow bolts and random targets, which pretty much do absolutely no damage. You just need to put a hot on them or something. But his main thing that he'll be doing is doing like giant lines of shadow horribleness called dark blasts. And then after like a couple of seconds, they'll explode and deal a huge amount of damage to you. So the idea is, is that you avoid the horrible dark blast. It's very simple. Now, something your tanks need to deal with is something called Unearing Shear. This will do a massive physical damage hit on the tank, and it also reduces your maximum health by 20%, and it's permanent and it stacks. The problem with this is, 
there is no way of knowing when it's coming in. He doesn't cast it. It's just like, bam, there you go. Yeah, there's absolutely no cast time whatsoever. Yeah. Like the way that we were sort of dealing with this ability when we decided to do no damage on the boss just so we could sort of see some of the mechanics. Yeah. Was like putting up cocoons and just hoping that they came in at the right time. And we managed to get to four stacks. When the fifth one came in, you just got one shot. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I didn't know. I think I still had like a, maybe a couple of abilities, but JK, <laughs> you're gone. It absolutely destroyed you. So... Yeah, um, luckily the boss doesn't have too much health and you can easily transition into the second phase anyway before it should get too high. But hopefully they put a cast time in it so at least you can react in some way without having to use a boss mod. The boss also has a whirling blade. He'll just target a player, throw a glaive towards them and then the glaive will just go back and forth along that path. If you get hit, you take physical damage and you also get knocked back. Also, periodically through phase one, lightning will strike certain areas of the room and just cause a massive blast to go across it. If you're hit by this, you're pretty much one shot. It's really easy to avoid, though. You have loads of time to avoid it. But one thing is that if you place the boss within this line, it'll actually damage him instead. Yeah, I didn't know about this until we read the dungeon journal yeah. afterwards. But yeah, it might be a way of getting the boss out of this phase even quicker, especially if your damage is low and you're taking too much damage from this horrible tank stack. But once you do get the boss to 20% HP, phase two will start and it will start with his lovely assistant, Latosius, coming out of the shadows, turning into a dreadlord and say, look, you're terrible, I'm gonna do it instead. And he numbs him all up. Ravencrest dies, but before he does die, well, he kind of turns into a ghost, even though he's like already a ghost. It's complicated. Either way, he gives you a huge buff that increases your damage and healing done and your health by 300%. And this is permanent throughout the whole of phase two, which is awesome because the new boss has an absolute shit ton of health and he deals a ton of damage. So this buff really helps you out when dealing with him. So this guy will pretty much only just do quite a large amount of tank damage and just spam Shadow Bolt volleys. You can't interrupt them. It does hit the entire group and it does do quite a lot of damage. So having this healing increase is pretty nice. Um, he will also spawn clouds of green mist on top of a player. And if you don't move from this green mist, you're actually put to sleep, yeah. which is very, very annoying. You can dispel the effect. And if you take any damage, it will also break the effect. So if the boss casts a volley, it would break it. But ultimately, if you move from the mist, then you don't need to worry about it. Now, the coolest ability is the ability that he's been using in phase one, you know, where he was at the side and he was yeah. just sending out shadow across the entire room. Well, now he splits into like 10 versions of himself and they will all spam it across the room like one after another. Yeah. Which creates like little areas of the room that you can stand in. And the idea is you need to try and avoid all of them and you just sort of shuffle forward every now and then. But it looks so insane. It actually destroys your frame rate. Yeah, it does going on was on like 30 frames a second. But yeah, it's kind of like Halion, if you remember from Ruby yeah, Sanctum. Yeah, it is. Well, it's kind of, you might as well just see it as a beam that is rotating around the room and you just got to stay in the safe zones. There's nothing else to do apart from like avoid like the green shit. I imagine getting hit by the green shit there and would be He does become awful. completely untargetable. Yeah, you so. can't even damage him. So it's just stay alive, wait for this to end and then come back down. But it's an awesome mechanic. Really, yeah. really cool when I saw that happen. It was a good fight. I mean, this is an entire instance, although some of the bosses are missing some of their abilities. Yeah. And wow errors are ridiculous right now on the alpha. Yeah, it's Which makes bad. doing this in instance a little bit irritating but overall i thought it was brilliant i yeah. really like the look of it i really like the aesthetic it, i like the eeriness of the catacombs yeah it's kind of like a mix of karazhan and hellfire citadel as you kind of kind go of. up it gets more and more legion corrupted and then in the last room it's kind of a nice mix of the two so yeah it's really awesome and i'm sure some of the lore people out there will really appreciate like some of the war of the ancients like throwbacks in there and like little hints and stuff so yeah it's an awesome dungeon really really fun and can't wait to see it on heroic so thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this little preview, then do drop us down a like. Helps us out a lot. And we shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.